goodness, that was hard rain to drive through. Uh, but we're all here, and we're the perfect people to be here to celebrate, uh, among other things, the third Sunday of at the Advent season, which we um, celebrate a little bit differently in that we honor um, the earth for the first Sunday, and then um, the plants for the second Sunday, and the animals for the third Sunday as a uh, everything on this planet is leaning towards the light and looking for the light to return and increase. So um, this is a Galia altar today, and we have, yeah, let's give it a, that's beautiful. And um, we have the animals here uh, that we're blessing today and the plants, and we have some meditating cats that are um, in joy, you know, for the happiness theme. But right now we're going to light three candles and sing our solstice song. So with me and with Bodhi. We light a candle in the dark to greet the newborn sun. The earth turns upon its axis, a new year is begun. A new year is begun. We light two candles in the dark to greet the newborn sun. Blossoms reaching to the light, winter's hold is done. Winter's hold is done. We light three candles in the dark to greet the newborn sun. Furry beings out from hiding, sleep will soon be done. Sleep will soon be done. Sleep will soon be done. just about 10 days till the darkness stops increasing. So we still have a ways to go. I want to welcome everyone this morning, but especially people who are brand new or newish and have not received our new brochure for new folks. So if you are in that category, new or newish, and you haven't received one of our welcome newcomers packets, if you would hold up your hand right now, we'll welcome you and put something in your hand. So welcome, welcome, and welcome to everybody else that's uh, um, old friends for us. So here we are at the Golden Gate Center for Spiritual Living where our vision is awakening personal transformation and our mission is teaching tools for positive change. So our theme for this whole year, which is, we got two more Sundays after this, but joy is not done. Joy is not done. What, what we have established is a habit, hopefully, for your joyous life to increase and increase and increase right past uh, 2015. So that's been our theme for this year and will continue to be through two more Sundays. And the theme for December is being perfect within the oneness. And so oneness and another quality, which is in the goal for December, and that's this one, keep working toward life mastery. The oneness and mastery are the two things that we work on all, 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 all the time. That is what awakens personal transformation and the tools for positive change all center around how we can experience our oneness with the infinite and with each other and how we can be more masterful in our lives. 
So I thought this was a good Sunday to quickly review the uh, goals that we have had for the whole year that have increased our joy and increased our life mastery. So we started with boost energy, and then we increased love, we aimed higher, we lightened up, we had more fun, we deepened friendships, we got happy with our money, we touched eternity, we pursued our passion, we increased our awareness, we kept a contented heart, and then this month we finish up with uh, keep working towards life mastery because the job isn't over till it's over, and it's not over for any of us. The title today is Happiness and Spiritual Growth. So happiness and joy is uh, what results from continuous spiritual work. It's pretty much assured if we stay on track with our spiritual growth. And the converse is also true. If we get stuck or if we neglect our spiritual growth, if we say it's not up to me and I wish those people would stop annoying me, uh, then what happens is that we get to stay with our familiar pain. That's what spiritual growth gets us through, is our familiar pain to our unfamiliar joy sometimes. And that's where we're wanting to go unless we just prefer our familiar pain. And I hope that's not any of us here. Um, but I think that each of us came into this life. We, were, we took birth to learn some spiritual lessons. And when we learn those spiritual lessons, that results in joy. So why not just be about it, you know? Why not just do it? Um, the, the reason that we don't sometimes is that spiritual practice, spiritual growth takes actual work. And sometimes the work is hard. And sometimes we even fool ourselves and say, oh, well, I've been doing this. I've been doing everything my practitioner tells me. I've been doing what we said that we were going to do in class, and, well, it just hasn't changed. And so effective spiritual work is what we need, and not to fool ourselves that we're doing spiritual work when we're not. So I have a story about this from myself. I was 24 years old, and I had uh, finished my first year of teaching high school. And you can imagine for a 23-year-old teaching... 17-year-olds was really challenging. And, and so I, I joined some friends of mine in San Francisco. I was teaching in Santa Barbara, and I spent my first summer after my first year of teaching in San Francisco in sort of a communal house. Now, I, this was very shortly after the Summer of Love in San Francisco, and I came from a really conservative background. And so for me to live in a house with girls and boys was really amazing and um and it was and i i had a waitress job and i had so much fun that i seriously considered not going back to teach the next year i mean i i told my mom and you can those of you <laughs> who know my mom can imagine what she said about that and um but i i i really thought you know this is i'm I, i'm expanding. I mean, actually, I was just having a riot, is what I was having. So I spoke to my assistant principal at the high school where I taught, and I said, I just feel like I'm growing so much. You know, I don't want to stop this. And actually, what I meant was I'm having too much fun to go back to work. And, uh, and so he said to me, you know, Carol, you're going to be growing throughout your whole life. And to make a long story short, I went back to work. And I'm telling you what, my life would have been way different if I had stayed in that communal house in San Francisco. <laughs> but I, I came back to work, and I realized that it, it, it was work, you know? It was, it, I had to apply myself. So in our book, it says this about that. Um, my first splendid truth, says our author, says that if I want to be happier, I need to look at my life and think about feeling good, feeling bad, and feeling right in an atmosphere of growth. I'd worked on all these elements, and it had made an enormous difference. 
But what had surprised me most about the first splendid truth was the importance of the final prong, the atmosphere of growth. I hadn't ascribed much weight to it, even when I'd identified it as the fourth element of happiness. My happiness project had proved to me, however, that the atmosphere of growth was a huge contributor to happiness. So what we're going to talk about today is keep working towards life mastery. That will ensure that we are working on our spiritual growth. And what I mean by mastery, um, when I, I put this little book together of wonderful quotes about oneness and about mastery, and I talk about how to use our inherent power to direct the experience of our lives. That's what mastery is. And specifically in the book, it is the powerful ability to move and shape our lives. This is the experience of creating what we love or loving what we have created. That's what I think mastery is. And so it's an experience of co-directing our life with the infinite. It's the experience of not being at the effect of others or of circumstances. And so there are some things that we, um, I have found that we have to do in order to keep our life moving towards life mastery. And the first one is practice consistently. So in our teaching, this could be an entire year's worth of material, what I'm going to say to you in the next two minutes. But in our philosophy, what we mean by spiritual work is pray, study, meditate, give, serve, forgive, tell the truth, and vision our lives. I'll say that again. You can see how intense this is and how far-reaching. Pray, study, meditate, give, serve, forgive, tell the truth, and vision, and not just once in a while, all the time. Additionally, it means to be empowering, compassionate, patient, clear, and kind with others. I should probably put this out in the letter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, also be generous, grateful, brave, and teachable. It means working on your lessons and giving your gifts. It means mining your mind so that you never gloss over an uncomfortable feeling. Because that uncomfortable feeling means that we are up against a life lesson or we are bumping up against a belief that we have that is disempowering or erroneous. And how many times do we have that feeling of, uh oh, and then we just do something else? We eat, drink, we strike up a conversation, we uh, exercise, we ignore whatever that feeling is of, ah, uh, I got to look at something here, I got to look at something in life or in me, something. That is mining your mind. That is not letting an uncomfortable feeling be ignored because that points to something that we need to grow through. That is what, that is so essential. Because what, when you learn how to do that, you become your own counselor. And you learn how to heal your beliefs as they come up. And you learn how to work on what you really want instead of wanting what somebody else wants for you or you know, getting bollocked up with somebody else's consciousness when it's your consciousness that wants to express as your life. This is the intensity of constant practice. That's what it means. So um, there's all kinds of ways that you can do this. I mean, every single book in the bookstore has a list of things to do that would be spiritually growthful. I'll just share one little thing that happened in the practitioner class. This is uh, a list. This is one of those things where in the instructor's manual, you get like five minutes to do this. This, this says here, this is a page right out of the, the instructor, or the study guide. What I really want in my life right now is more, and here are your choices. I won't read them all, but I'll start. 
Vitality, security, activity, health, strength, energy, fitness, relaxation, comfort, nutrition, control, imagination, money, responsibility, education, experience, self-awareness, composure, solitude, serenity, joy, sleep, exercise. That's a third of your choices. So the students read over this and they go, um, I want them all. I want every one of them. And so we talked about how could we work with this list and structure our spiritual work so that we are available for more of all of this. Because it says infinite good is ever available. Infinite good is ever available. These are qualities that are nobody could, could argue that they're good. And we want them. So we thought about taking one every single day and just being aware of it. You know, today I'm going to be aware of self-expression and all of the ways that I can live in my self-expression. But the point is, you have all of these curricula all over the place, and you got to do it. You have to do something that is spiritually growthful. And actually, it doesn't really matter too much what it is, but you just have to do it consistently. I would recommend that everybody sign up for a class. If everybody signed up for a class, we would have to be really creative about the spaces. But boy, the teachers would absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. So the reason is that in order to change, you have to do it again and again and again because we are about habits and creating new habits of spiritual growth mean that you need to do something different even if you're on a trajectory of spiritual growth you could do more right we all could absolutely and if we do a little more all the time we just become so clear and happy so Henry David Thoreau says this as a single footstep will not make a path on the earth, so a single thought will not make a pathway in the mind. To make a deep and physical path, we walk again and again. To make a deep mental path, we must think over and over the kind of thoughts we wish to dominate our lives. That's spiritual work. And the, you just, you got to do it. Next is, accept life as it is. In order to grow, we have to know where we are. So my wonderful son came. He drove across the country. But in order to get to home to Santa Rosa, he actually had to know where he started out. He started out on the East Coast, but if he started out in Atlanta or Boston, the pathway home would be very, very different. He had to know where he started. He, it wasn't a big, I mean, he knew he started in Boston, and I knew he started in Boston, but you get the point. The analogy is, in order for you to get anywhere else, you have to know where you are right now. You have to look at, my life is filled with impatience, or my life is filled with pain, or my life is filled with loneliness. You have to face what it is and not resist it in order to move from it. And everything in our life also happens for a really good reason. Wherever you are in that growth place and it doesn't feel really good, that's, it's good that you're uncomfortable because that's the impetus to move and to learn and to grow. So if I say everything happens for a reason and a good reason, Sometimes if you're in the midst of it, it's difficult to know what that good reason might be because your consciousness is filled with pain. But we are meaning makers. And if we start with, what is the value here? What is the value here? We will be able to find it. If, that's, if that would be our response to a, a painful situation, every single time a painful situation came up, whether it's a global issue or a personal issue, if it makes us unhappy, even if it's a global issue, it is personal. And if we say, what is the value here, then um, we'll be able to find it. Oh, this is a quote um, that I said. <laughs> 
I put my quotes in the same book with Henry David Thoreau. So I said, there is a blessing here, and I am determined to find it. And that's so true, you know? You know, if you quote me, just take it and have it be your, your message. That there is a blessing here, and I am determined to find it. Next, we mark our progress. That's the value of journals so that we can look back on where we were and see our growth. Um, in my bathroom at home, and, and actually, you're all invited over to my house. It takes a, a, a trek to get there. That's why I don't have too many of you drop by. But uh, occasionally I do. In my bathroom are eight treasure maps from the last eight years. They're very, very entertaining. If people come over and end up in my bathroom, they usually stay a long time. <laughs> But on, on all the walls, I have my treasure maps from the last eight years. And I can see eight years ago what I wanted and how it's manifest. So keeping track of our progress is really important. I had a conversation with your president this week, Gail Durkin, who said that she has been keeping a gratitude journal since May. Every single day, every single night, before she goes to sleep, she writes how many? Ten. She writes ten gratitudes for that day. And she says her life is different in every single way. And the difference is better. Right, honey? Absolutely. So that would be something that you can give everybody on your list is a gratitude journal. Lastly is keep climbing. Um, one more quote from Gretchen here. Um, I noticed, oh, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's two kinds of, of ways to mark your growth, at least two. I'd noticed idly that a lot of people use the term goal instead of resolution. And one day in December, it struck me that this difference is, in fact, significant. You hit a goal, you keep a resolution. Run a marathon, that's a good a goal. It's specific, it's easy to measure success, and once you've done it, you've done it. Sing in the morning and exercise better are better cast as resolutions. You won't wake up one day and find that you've achieved it. It's something that you resolve to do every day. So I'm thinking that both goals and resolutions are different and both are important. And one of the ways that it's really fun to keep track of your goals and resolutions is to have a prayer partner, is to have somebody, that I have my prayer partner I've been with for years, and we pray every single Wednesday morning, and how many of you have prayer partners that you pray regularly with? Okay, see, lots of hands, but not everybody, not most, so that would be something really wonderful for you to uh, use in your spiritual practice. So when you do this, when you keep living your life towards mastery, you get goodies along the way. And so that's the next part, the divine gifts along the path. So this leads to increased joy and a deeper relationship with spirit. And I want to talk about two different spiritual gifts. And they're both exemplified in the Christmas story. It's really a wonderful uh, kind of segue into the Christmas story. Uh, the first divine gift that we get is revelation. So this is what happened to the shepherds. This is what we sang about in the first one. The, sh the shepherds are humble workers. They are dedicated workers. They are kind with their sheep. They just keep doing their work, just like I'm asking us all to do. They just keep doing their work. They were out there on the hillside, I mean, we don't need to debate what time of year Jesus was really born. But nonetheless, the, in the story, the shepherds were out in the fields. And the angels appeared. They broke through. Now, I, I just want you to imagine that, you know, you're sitting outside on a dark night, and all of a sudden, the, 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 the wind picks up, and the, the clouds roll in, and there's all kinds of special effects, you know, like the best movie in the world, but it's happening right above you. And then the angels start appearing out of the clouds and saying, Hark, uh, come and see what, we, what the Christ child, come and visit. 
And so, um, good tidings of great joy, I think it is. And so, it broke upon the shepherds. It was a revelation that wasn't asked for. They weren't saying, oh, I wonder if it's tonight. They, it, it was an amazing thing that happened. And so when that happens to us, it is that we have been seeking God, and all of a sudden, God just shows up in our life in the most amazing way. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. So the most recent one that happened to me, um, and I'll tell this quickly, was a, a dear friend of mine died. And, um, and he was really into my pagan stuff. And, um, and he kept asking, you know, is there a goddess for this? Is there a goddess for this? And, um, and he died. And the day he died, uh, I, it was kind of surprising to me that he died. But he, he died two months ago yesterday. And Mary, at home, came out of her office with a photograph and the photograph came out of a corner of her office that ha had not been touched for a long time. No business was going on in that corner. And this photograph appeared out of nowhere, out of, like the angel, out of nowhere. So the photograph Mary had never seen before, I knew it. It was a picture of my mom with newborn baby Michael, with Michael in her arms, Having giving him a bottle of water. And the more I thought about that, I, why did this picture show up out of nowhere? And then I thought, you know, there's nobody that was more earth mothery than my mom. And I got that she's holding this newborn baby boy in her arms, and one of the one of the interpretations of death on this side is birth on the other side. And I thought, you know, the goddess has him. He was looking for the goddess all this time, and he steps over, and she grabs him and embraces this new being in heaven and gives him exactly what he needs. Now, that was a revelation to me. That was a message from beyond it was a message from the other side that I haven't had very many of. And it made me so happy. It was a miracle. And that's what happens to us. And more when we recognize them as miracles. When we say, wow. That's not just appreciation, wow. So that's one of the gifts you get when you stay on the path. The other one is guidance. And this is symbolized by the wise men. The wise men were the most educated, we imagine, the most educated men of their time. They were astronomers, we think. And they studied the sky. And they saw this new thing in the sky and knew it was of tremendous significance. And they used this light in the sky to guide them to the Christ child. And so this is the, the symbol of the other kind of gift that we get. When we study and work and pray and meditate and forgive and all those things, all those things, constantly, 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 if we go through our list and, you know, today is my self-expression day, we are studious in our spiritual work, and then we want something, we need something, we ask for guidance, and it is shown to us. So, isn't this great? I mean, this is great. This is, I love this. Um, when we don't consistently practice these miracles and guidance, we, they, of course, are there because God never goes away from us, but we don't recognize them unless we are consistently courting the divine presence and doing our own spiritual work. And then, 
we are given the gift of guidance and revelation and all kinds of other gifts. So I, I said something about uh, what we're doing is creating habits. Um, Arthur shared this book with me. This is a, a newer book by Gretchen Rubin, this author here, this author here. This book is better than before. And she talks about how we change. This is a whole book about how we change. So this is the beginning of it. Better Than Before tackles the question, how do we change? One answer, by using habits. Habits are the invisible architecture of daily life. We repeat about 40% of our behavior almost daily, so our habits shape our existence and our future. If we change our habits, we change our life. So the, the aphorism for science of mind is change your thinking, change your life. And we've got to change our habits too. What we think, what we say, and what we do. We change that, and then we change our life. Okay? You got it? All right. Should I ask you the spiritual principles today, or should I tell you? I'll tell you. <laughs> so, the first one is... Spiritual practice results in spiritual growth. Yes? yes? Next one. Spiritual growth results in a deep connection with the divine. Yes? Yes, yes. Okay. Going to renew and reinvigorate our practice? Good. So the deepest prayer in conclusion is let me learn and grow and be blessed by every life experience every single life experience, without exception. The ones we love, the ones that are harm or painful for us, every experience is beneficial. And when that is our mantra, then all that I've talked about falls into place. All the practice, because we're led into practice because we're looking for the benefit, we're led into spiritual practice, and then we're led into receiving the spiritual gifts. And then we arrive closer and closer to life mastery. And so the going deeper for all of us is my life is my learning lodge. So you ready to do the inner work? Okay. So we'll just do a little practice right now. I invite you within to that place of peace, poise, and power where the infinite is already in residence, lying in wait for us to turn our faces to the light, turn our faces to the wisdom and the infinite love that is always available to us. So, easy first. Recall an experience where the gift is obvious. Maybe it was something that you worked very hard for, or maybe it was one of those revelations. You worked hard before, and now the benefits of your connection with Spirit give you a miracle. And you have this experience of something really wonderful, joyful, expansive, beautiful. And in contemplating it, because we are in the habit of mining our mind, you come to the realization that all of these gifts, just like the cornucopia, pour from this experience that you have recognized as a blessing. All of these gifts of joy and peace and increased wisdom and more comfort in life. All these gifts. And you realize it's, it's a progression of recognizing the benefit, the blessing, and receiving the gifts. And now, letting that experience move into the background. Recall an experience that could be superfluous, it could be painful, it could be annoying, it could be sad, 
It could be something that has anger associated with it. And if what we teach is true, as many or more gifts are available through that experience. And so we pray that deepest prayer. Let me learn, grow, and be blessed by every life experience, knowing that this experience, too, holds great gifts, great benefits. And so we resist nothing. We accept everything. And we look for the blessings. And there they are. Blessed be.